I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fang claws coming out through, three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. Go on. Oh, you know what? We missed a watch last week. What kind of watch? A uh, a movie watch. Oh, what movie? Stuber? Uh, Door the Explorer. Oh, no. You know, the city of lost gold. I almost went to watch Stuber yesterday. I didn't. What's Stuber. I That's the Kumail Nanjiani uh, flick. But I saw Dora was in theaters, and I was like, I sort of want to just go buy a single ticket for Dora the Explorer and just have that experience. I don't know if you really want that, to be totally honest. I want... I like having... I don't like having normal interactions with people. Like, it to be super awkward or, like, it to mm-hmm. be super dope. Yeah, And yeah. showing up by myself to watch Dora at NGC, I imagine it would be super awkward, and therefore I would bask in it. Yeah, that's a... Uh, I mean, that's yeah. a power play, for sure. Oh, yeah. The, the only risk is you don't want to... See... There is an inherent risk to showing up to Dora the Explorer alone. Oh, there is. Um, I just want to point that out. I'm not going to go into is. detail on it, but I want to point that out. Oh, yeah. No, I know. Yeah. <laughs> like, Crawl. What the fuck? Crawl? From the producers of... The director of The Hills Have Eyes. Oh, I, that was a hard movie to watch. Yeah, I watched it at your house... The, the <laughs> remake. Yeah, a lot of people say that where I'll be like, this is a hard movie. And then someone will be like, oh, yeah, I saw, I saw that at your place. Yeah. <sighs> someone said that to me about Black Sheep, the uh, the New Zealand horror flick. Yeah, but you love that. so. Oh, I love that movie so much. Um, yeah. Y- yeah. You've, you've forced more people to watch that movie than I think anyone has ever been forced to watch any movies ever. It's, hey, when October comes around, I'm watching it's, Tucker and Dale, and I'm watching Black Sheep with other that's people, fair. hands down. Have you ever seen Tucker and Dale? Yeah. Okay. Was it with oh, me? Oh, it's wait, it wasn't with, with you. I, so, okay. The story behind Tucker and Dale, I think yeah. what happened with Tucker and Dale was I found, I discovered it, I think, on Netflix. No, it wasn't on Netflix yet. I discovered it somewhere. I bought the DVD. Yeah, yeah. Watched it. Fell in love with it because it has it's uh, so good. It has like two of my favorite actors ever. The guy who plays um, Wash on Firefly, I think, is Tucker. Um, and the other guy is Kevin. Le- I, I want to say Kevin Levine. It's Adam Levine and it's, Adam um, Levine, Alan uh, Tudyk, Adam Tudyk, Ty- yeah. Tyler Levine and Alan yes. Tudyk. Ted, T- we named the guy from that band. But yep. yes, they're two fantastic actors, and Both the movie of- itself is so good. It's a horror movie, so for people who do not know, it's a horror movie that does 180, 180 in horror movies. So it's from the perspective of the villain, if it was a horror movie, mm-hmm. but the villain is just a guy who's bad at communication. Mm-hmm. So, for example, a group of teenagers go on spring break, and they stop at a gas station. This guy has, like, overalls and stuff on, and he goes, oh, they're not from around here. I should, you know, spark up a conversation, be a nice guy. Mm -hmm. And he does such by going, y'all not from around here, are you? And then they flip out. And that's the whole movie. And it's so brilliant. It's a a movie about communication. Yeah. That is the best way to describe it. It's a movie about poor communication. Uh Uh-huh. And it's featuring two of probably the funniest actors who have ever of lived. all time, yes. I, I'm not going to lie. Everything that Tyler Labine has been in, yeah. I have loved. It's so... It's good. He's also in... What's the Amazon show? Um, the, where he the, can see ghosts. That's a... Uh, it's a Hulu show, actually. Sorry, yes. Um, And it's called... Jesus, I... It it's it, it got. Canceled. It doesn't even matter. It's so funny though. It, it's He's the so first, good. It also that that show also featured um, uh, Danny DeVito's daughter. I did not know that. Yes, Danny DeVito's daughter was on that show. Um, she was the 
love interest for the first two seasons. Oh, shoot. Okay. Yeah, the, like, evil girl's, like, uh, assistant. Okay. Um, I was it, unaware it, of that. It, it had, like, a very yeah. fun name, and I can't remember what the name of it was. Oh, he was on It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. The premise um, was that he can see ghosts when he smokes pot, therefore it's yep. a funny show. Like, well, he can he great. can always see ghosts, but he smokes pot t- to get possessed by... Oh, yes, that's it. <laughs> that's exactly it. Yes. Deadbeat yes, is the name yes, of the yes. show. Yes. Um, yeah. In the first episode, he gets into an altered state so he could be possessed by a World War II, a, 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 a guy who died in World War II. So he could have one last night of fun with his uh, sweetheart. Yes, but he was unaware it was World War II at the time. Correct. Oh, this show. This is just a good show. I remember actually, finding it and being like, this is amazing. It was phenomenal. It was phenomenal. They they canceled it, though, because I think the dynamic got screwed up when um, they changed yeah. the cast around a little bit, and it didn't do as well, but yeah. that's a whole nother thing. I whole still have thing. to watch I, The Boys yet. I mean, the IT guy told me about it. You told me about it. I'm going to watch that. Um, it's, I don't have Hulu. My sister's XXX boyfriend had Hulu, therefore I have Hulu still, um, so I will watch it. XXX. Okay. Uh, yeah. The Boys is Amazon Prime. Oh, it's Amazon Prime? All right, I have yeah. that too. Yeah. It's real good. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, there was one other movie that came out last week that I forgot about. Uh, Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. Oh, okay. How's that look? Yeah. It's got an 80% from critics on Rotten Tomato and 100% okay. from viewers. So Shoot. That's on my queue of things I need to definitely see. Hell yeah. Austin Abrams, is that? Wait a second. That I think I might have seen the trailer for this. It's a uh, Guillermo del Toro. He's twenty two. Del Toro. He doesn't look twenty. Tw- See, here's this is going back to what we were talking about last week. Yeah. Um, I look at this twenty two year old and I think, oh, 16. Oh yeah. Yeah. So. I'm an here's adult. A, I'm yeah. I'm bad at ages. Like, yeah. Everyone in this movie is a baby. Yeah. No, and they're probably all like in their early twenties. Is this out now? Yeah, it's out now. Nineteen is nineteen so far right. is the youngest one. Uh doesn't have her age. Okay. I feel like they hide female ages more frequently. It is Which, not an NGC, but when it is, I know what... Oh, no, it is. It is, it is, it is. I think okay. it got its official release recently. Yeah, so. okay. Hey, maybe I'll watch that later. Who knows? Okay. I said that, and then the next guy I searched has his age hidden, so... All right, whatever. Um, I, I want to see it. There's... It looks, I dropped IMDb Pro because, like, I'm not paying for that, and they well, yeah. worked out all the cool shit I put in there. Did they? Yeah, so it's not, there's not even, like, pictures of me or anything like that anymore. Or, like, for, really? like video clips and all that. Now it's just, uh, like, a blurb, like a bio. I'm looking you up. Because I don't want to pay for that. Because that's not really, I don't do that much anymore. You were in, you were thanked in uh, Dance Central 3, you should know. Oh, yeah, no, I know. I think that's a new one. Yeah, and The um. Voice Thief. Um, no, it's not new. That's 2012. Um, well, no, no. Those weren't on your credits before. Oh, no, they were. They were, were they? Credits. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, uh, but I had, like, all screenshots and pictures and stuff, but it turns out if you need screenshots to be up, that's a monthly fee. And I was like, I didn't know that. I'm not going to pay for that. That's weird. And then they took it all down. On the plus side, you still have your the, the podcast link and your website link, so that's nice. Oh, yeah, that's true. Plus, I'm up 25,000 views this week, so that's good. Oh shit! How about that? Yeah. Really? That's yeah. kind of bizarre. Because <laughs> you know what? Here's the thing: I know it's not from. I know it's not from the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's just when I click C rank, it says I'm up twenty five thousand nine hundred seventy four this week from last week. So, hmm. yeah, weird. Yeah, it um, is weird. Because I still have a pro account. I'm just not paying for it, which is why they took all this like 
cool pictures and stuff down. That's so weird. You'd think that uh, I don't know. I guess that's how they. I guess I guess that's how they make their money, but whatever. it is because they're not like a. Th- I don't think they're a thing. Like they're just a database. Yeah. Yeah. So they must they must charge. It's kind of like how Yelp works then, probably. Yeah. Probably yeah. Okay. Um. Anywho. Although I might start paying for it again because I'm like I want those pictures though. Are you willing? How much was it a month? I don't recall. I have to check. It depends, because it might be worth it. Yeah, I don't know if it's worth it technically, but that that's up that's that's up to you. I mean, I just canceled several subscription services, so I'm like, well, maybe I can just get Fair pictures. Enough. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Um. I I got distracted again. Okay. Uh, so I think I think it's I think. I'm going to try and break the Cryptopedia curse and get us going. Mainly okay. because this is a f- huge episode. Oh, I did not know that. I was unaware. My yeah. last one was a little bit short, so I figured maybe you had a hard time doing short stuff. Okay. Let's this see what's is up. a This is a 10-pager. Holy cow. Okay. Um, so, as always, uh, I'm... How do I do... How do I usually start the podcast? You don't. Uh, you just ignore everything I say up top and just say... Yeah. This is Cryptopedia. I'm John. Yeah. This is Cryptopedia. I'm John. I'm Brandon. Uh, if you want to know all the fun stuff, just listen to Brandon's episodes. He, he has he has that copy I wrote at one time and uh, the copy he added to it. It's a whole thing. I literally copy and pasted off our website and just changed it a touch. Yeah. Uh, let's see. What's our website got? Um, oh, no. Great things- content. Things are going to get weird, dot, dot, dot. Cryptopedia is an exploration of the myths and legends that haunt the human mind. Each week, Brandon and John will take you on a journey exploring the mysteries of the world, tackling tales with a dash of skepticism. It's way more than a dash now, by the way. And an extra oh, helping yeah. of humor. It's way less than an extra. Um, <laughs> 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 Anywho, uh, so this week's cryptid is one that's been on my list for a while. Okay. Uh, it's not a listener-suggested one. That one's coming soon. Uh, but it is one that I, I I don't know why, but it's one of those ones that has been stuck in my brain for like a yeah. long time in my life. I think it was on a cartoon show once okay. and that's why it's, it's in my brain. Uh, yep. Yep. It, it was explicitly on a cartoon show. It was in Jackie Chan adventures. That's why I'm thinking Oh of it. yeah. You're like, okay. if I eat tail. I know what grandpa said the whole time. What's well, uncle is what he calls him. His uncle. It's uncle. You gotta work on fight each out. I love that show so hard. It was a really good show. Um, I wanted the the hair talisman, but yes. anywho. So this this cryptid was first sighted, and I use the term cryptid loosely, yeah. um, because it's identified as both. It's been identified as a cryptid, a demon, a hoax, mass hysteria, an alien, and a bunch of normal men. It's been a uh, lot of things. What? Yeah, it's a weird one. Uh, so it was first sighted in, this is the wrong date, uh, 1837, not 1887. Uh, its taxonomy is humanoid, okay. and it's from England. Okay. So this is a Victorian-era cryptid creature thing. What's a Victorian-era cryptid? I'm going to say brownie, but I'm not sure. I'm just saying brownie because that feels... Like it's around the right time, and in general, the correct uh, area. <laughs> oh, you would be wrong. That's a hint. Uh, ha you would be wrong. Is this like rumpled seal skin or something? I mean, it's close. That's Americana, but... I think. Uh, check out. No, no, definitely not Americana. Check out the broadcast folder and take a look. It's the most recently thing added thing. Spring Hill Jack. Spring Hill Jack. John, yes. It's been a long time coming, and before we start the episode, I do want to put a trigger slash content warning. Uh, it turns out spring Jack n- is definitely associated with sexual assault, so... Oh, yes. If you're um, if you are sensitive to those topics, maybe not the best episode for you. Yeah. But, uh, just wanted to give everyone a little bit of a warning as a heads up. Also, in the event that there's someone in the car who you don't want to hear have hearing about it or, you know, anything like that. Um, So, yeah. 
Uh, this week's cryptid is spring Heeled Jack. I'm excited. I am excited. Yeah. I'm so it's... excited. That's a Kevin Hart joke. Okay, continue. This Here's the other thing, too. Yeah. This is definitely a part one. Oh, man. <laughs> There's way more details on spring Heeled Jack than I ever expected. Uh, that is fantastic. I'm stoked yeah. about this. I haven't even... And you know what? This episode, we're not even going to get into how it was, like, quote-unquote, rediscovered. We're not going to get into all the alien ties that it has. Yeah. We're not going to get into its more recent sightings. We're not going to get into, like, about half a century's worth of sightings. This is yeah. literally just the first wave of sightings. Holy cow. Yeah. So... But before we get into that, I think it's very important to talk about Victoria yeah. era England, um, because almost the entirety of Spring Hill Jack sightings, like yes. ones that are can- canonical, occur during the Victoria period, Victorian era. Um, so before delving into the intricacies of Spring Hill Jack, it is important yeah. to have a point of reference for the culture surrounding the sightings. Mm-hmm. The Victorian era is demarcated by the reign of Queen Victoria of England, as you might assume, lasting from yeah. 1837 to 1901. The period was okay. marked by the rise of the middle class in England, invigorated by the Reform Act of 1832, and an increase in the focus on morality. Mm-hmm. Religious forces were decidedly in turmoil, something not unusual for England, which there's the Black Shuck episode if you want to know a little bit about yeah. some of that weird infighting that happened in England. Uh, with conflict between nonconformist churches and the Church of England. So nonconformist church is basically anything that's yeah. not the Church of England. Um, additionally, agnosticism saw its birth in this era, mostly in part thanks to Darwin. Mm-hmm. Uh, although atheism was still a crime, atheists typically referred to themselves as free thinkers or secularists at this time. Um, and probably for a long time after, because it's still not mm-hmm. really a yeah uh, a super super well liked thing. Yeah. Um, additionally, uh, and probably relevant to the nature of this week's episode, uh, this period also saw the rise of the novel. Um, okay, particularly with things in a like like gothic fiction, so like the strange case of Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde, Picture of Dorian Gray. Um, I love Picture of Dorian Gray. Yeah. This period also saw the like first Sherlock Holmes stories, I believe. Um, yeah. There's there's a, just a bunch of like, uh, I think Frankenstein was written at this time. Okay. Stein. And Mary Shelley. Oh, it was written a little bit before this period. So okay. like basically novels were becoming a thing, right? Like uh, League of like basically imagine League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. That's the yeah. time period. Uh, so, on sources, this week, the majority of my information will be coming from Mike Dash's Fortean Studies research article, spring yeah. Jack to Victorian Boogaboo from Suburban Ghost. Yeah. Let me try that one again, because I have no idea how to pronounce that. To Victorian Boogaboo, Boogaboo, I don't know what a Boogaboo is, a bugaboo. from Suburban Ghost. Boogaboo? Yeah. Boogaboo Creek. Oh, I miss that so bad. You ever pet the moose? Yeah, well, I had my birthdays there like every year for most of my life. So okay. I pet that moose a lot. I kiss the moose too. Depending. Don't never kiss the moose. Yeah, I, I tried to avoid kissing the moose. It's a little, little weird. It's been replaced. The one near us has been replaced by a tilted kilt. Um, oh, fun. Which okay, is really good. gross. Yeah. I, I, I've gone over this with, with Lissa a lot. I feel like I feel like tilted kilt and, and hooters are grosser than a strip club. Yes. And the reason I say that is because, at the very least, a strip club is honest about what it is. Yes. Hooters and Tilt the Kilt are not honest about what they are. No. And, layer on top of that, uh, the fact of the matter is, like, you'll get, like, middle-aged men who go there with their families, and they're like, oh, I just like the wings. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. I don't think... <laughs> I, I I don't know the 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 ambiance is not good. I don't like it. I don't I don't like it. I don't like it when people are not upfront about what they what they're yeah. there for. But I'm not gonna harp on that. Don't yeah. So let's get into the legend of Springheel Jack, and this is gonna be a slightly abridged version because there's a lot more to it, and I want to only focus on 
one particular sighting. Yeah. Um, while con- canonically first sighted in 1837, I personally think starting with the legend gives a better totalistic view of the creature. Um, yeah. The following telling of the re- legend. Uh, I don't know what's wrong with my mouth today. I, <laughs> let me let me put this in perspective. I bit my tongue while eating pizza. Uh, I just ate pizza, but okay. Yeah, I, which eating pizza is like breathing to me, though. Yeah. And I screwed it up somehow. I, I don't know how I screwed it up. Uh-huh. I might die. I don't know. Uh, Maybe. The following telling of the legend is reproduced from Mike Dash's spring Hill Jack to Victorian Bugaboo from Suburban Ghost. I think I got it that time. Yes. I should note I am relying a lot on his analysis. And main reason for that is because he's been doing this since, like, 1996. Uh, yeah. Because he's, like, the literal expert on spring Hill Jack. And he has a lot of sources, which I looked at to verify some of his claims and things. Yeah. And they all held up as far as I could tell. So I'm going to defer a lot to him. I'm going to have a link to the article in the show notes. Uh, mm-hmm. If I miss out on anything, feel free to le- read it. Um, okay. It does appear, however, that this ad- uh, this telling from that article is also then adapted from a 1961 article, The Mystery of spring Jack, in the May-June issue of... The Flying Saucer Review by ufologist yeah. John Viner. Um, Viner had discovered the legend while looking for evidence of aliens prior to the 1940s, which is going to be an episode two topic. Yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. Because <laughs> uh, this this story, I like, this is a weird story because it's like one of those stories that I thought was less insane than it is. Yeah. But but not for the reasons of like the paranormal claims. I mean for the reasons of how it became a story. Yeah. So <clears throat> let me get my my let me put my Victorian English monocle on. Nice. Let me put a uh, a nice high high cuffed uh, turtle Collar-y. neck thingy. Yeah. yeah collar. Um. <clears throat> it started with a ring at the gate and ended with a demonic laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yes. yes. The gate was the front gate of a lonely cottage that stood just outside the little village of Old Ford to the east of London, and the bell on it jangled violently at about quarter to nine on the evening of 20 February 1838. Yeah. Inside the cottage, 18-year-old Jane Alslop looked uncertainly at her parents and her sister, who could be calling at such a time. It was already dark and chill outside, and there were few passers-by in such an isolated spot. But the bell rang again, longer this time, and louder. So Jane opened the front door and walked the short distance to the gate. Now, uh, let me pause right yeah. there. Old Old Ford is no longer a, a like sleepy little village. It's a uh, it's it's part of the metropolis. So okay, <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, I just want to put that in perspective. Like all these things are happening, it, it makes yeah. it sound like it's in this like distant suburbs or whatever but it's really yes. like by modern standards it's all very close together <laughs> her eyes had not yet adjusted to the dark but dimly she made out the figure of a man standing in the lane although he although enveloped in a cloak he appeared angular and some sort of headgear augmented his considerable height yeah approaching him jane asked what was the matter i am a policeman the man snapped black for God's sakes, bring me a light. We have caught spring Jack here in this lane. Um, Jane hurried back into the cottage to fetch a candle. Like uh-huh. every other resident of Old Ford and all the other villagers, all the other villages on the outskirts of London, she had heard stories about the mysterious demon who had been first seen in the autumn of the previous year. <laughs> Jack was said to, have, <laughs> to appear as either a ghost clad in armor or as a oh. baboon. A bear I or was a devil. Unaware of all of this. Yeah. Early That's Spring Hill Jack is insane. Yes. Um, early <coughs> Spring Hill Jack is like. Yeah. I'll, I'll get into it in a second, but it, it's it's very bizarre. He's more of a shapeshifter early on in his career than he is anything else. Yeah. Um, although it's never reported that he like shapeshifts in front of anyone. So yeah. Um. And his hideous appearance and preternaturally agile leaps were rumored to have frightened quite a number of his female victims into fits or worse. 
Quickly, Jane ran back into the house, returning with a candle, which she handed to the waiting figure. His reaction was not what she expected. Far from thanking her and making off to secure one of the most wanted criminals in England, um, I'm going to make a point right here. Yeah. He was not the most wanted criminal in England. This is an embellishment. <laughs> um, the man leaned back and threw down his coat, and holding the lighted candle to his chest, bathed his face in its eerie glow. Uh-huh. Jane could not help but scream. The face thus revealed was hideously ugly. Its eyes uh. blazed red as the coals of hell, and pinched tight features topped off by a particular sort of helmet. The body... Meanwhile, encased in a tightly fitting shining suit and a strange object resembling a lamp was strapped to the chest. There could be no doubt. (laughs) It's not a lamp. What is it then? I don't know, but I can tell you what it's not, and that's a lamp. Fair enough. There could be no doubt that far from lending help to a policeman, Jane had been ensnared by spring Jack himself. So, uh, spring Jack, uh... He he's kind of a bit of a uh, he he kind of he's kind of got a little bit of a trollish sensacy to him. Yes. Uh he he seems to enjoy just being like, hey, 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 I'm here. Um, she had no time to register more than these initial presence. Uh, she had no time to register more than these initial impressions before Jack attacked. Uh the which, Jack attack. That's a. That's that's the name of like a, a TV show or something. Jack mm-hmm. Attack. It's yes. got to be. Um, leaping forward, he vomited balls of blue and white fire oh, into God. her face. I was it's... unaware that this ever happened. Yeah, uh, that's that's part of the reason why I wanted to lead with this legend because it's ridiculous. Oh God. Uh, okay. And seized her by her dress and neck, pinned her head under. Uh, let me let me start at the top because that was a weird sentence. Leaping forward, he vomited balls of blue and white fire into her face and seized her by her dress and neck, pitting her head under one arm. With mounting terror, she realized that in place of fingers, he had large, sharp, he had sharp, long talons, which he was using to tear at her clothes and her face. It has large talons. Large talons. Large talons. Talons. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's Napoleon. Jane might be Napoleon Dynamite or Napoleon Dynamite's girlfriend from that movie whose name I don't remember. Yeah. I don't remember either. Shrieking with fear, Jane somehow wrenched herself free and ran towards the front door. Jack came after her, catching her on the doorstep, pinning her again, scratching her arms and yanking clumps of her hair out. Whoa, that's brutal. Yeah, it's... Ripping hair out is always, like, really, like... Yeah. It's such a visceral thing, because, like, you can imagine it, right? The, like, sound is just... Because whenever I think about it, I think about pulling a weed out of the... Like... Oh, yes! That's what I'm thinking of, that that awful sound yeah. of, like, when you're weeding in, the gar- like, a garden or something. Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. Um, As he did so, Jane's younger sister Mary appeared at the door. But she was much too alarmed at Spring Hill Jack's supernatural appearance to render any assistance, and it was left to the an older sister, Miss Sarah yeah. Harrison, to come to James' aid. Somehow, yeah. the unfortunate girl was dragged free of Jack's deadly embrace, and the front door slammed in the assailant's face. Even then, Jack did not give up. He banged heavily on the door until the rest of the Alsop family appeared at an upstairs window and called loudly for the police. Then, perhaps persuaded that he could do no more mischief, oh, that he could do more mischief. On this night, at least, he vanished yeah. back into the darkness from which he come. So, um... So, at this point in time, was calling for the police, just leaning out the window and calling, literally, pretty for much. the police? Pretty okay. much, yeah. I get it's it. It's pretty like, like... I get it. Hey, help! Help! We got some real check! Help! 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 help. help. Ah. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Um... I mean England. That's England. In the eighteen, that, yeah, that's England now. No, it's not. That's a bad joke. No, nah, no, it wasn't a good joke. I mean, this is also back when like gas lighting is still relatively new. Yeah. Too. So like, an outskirt town is not going to have really good gas lighting. They might have, they might have some, um, some like like you know like oil lights or something like that. Yeah. But you know, and they might they might still be lit because it's you know early evening like mm. nine ish 
So yeah. it's well, although then again, in around then it might be late evening. So who knows? But yeah, whatever. Because there's less interesting stuff to do in that time period. Yeah, that's. I true. mean, they don't even have the internet. Uh, there's a lot of steps for the internet. I know, but. <laughs> Uh, this portion of the legend, and there is more, but it overlaps with the rest of the episode and next episode, so I might pull yeah. bits and pieces of it in, um, more or less codifies some of the key features of spring Hill Jack, like in the canonical view, like the things mm-hmm. that everyone imagines, right? A humanoid appearance with demonic traits, superhuman strength and leaping, and a penchant for shit-eating. The what? I mean, like that shit-eating grin. Okay. Right? Like that, that just being like... I didn't want to say a, being trolly because that word has become so yeah. like diluted, but he's kind of trolling. Yeah, like that's kind of his thing. It's like, oh, yeah. I'm Spring Heel Jack now. Um, Henry Zabrowski does that way better than me. Um, <laughs> additionally, his tendency for sexual assault is in full effect, which that's kind of why I put the trigger warning at the beginning. He's yeah, he's yeah. Um, Jack is not a misunderstood villain in these stories, nor is he a mindless creature. Rather, it or he, whatever you want to call him, is described as a fully sentient being of unbridled cruelty. A being which is said to have terrorized London and its suburbs for the better part of a century and yeah. may still persist to this day. Oh, man. I don't believe that for a second, but that's a whole other thing because it's more likely that someone would say that Batman attacked them than Spring Hill yeah. Jack attacked him because he's described as kind of bat like in later occurrences so yeah uh, or bat boy for that matter bat boy um which i we got to one of these days we have to do like we have to do an episode that's just about the weekly world news oh yes like it doesn't it doesn't have to go into a lot of depth but like yeah. i just want to do a a grab bag about the weekly world news yes that would be amazing also Haha, guess whose IMDb is back up? This guy's. Did you literally pay to re- reinstate your IMDb while I was ta- while I was reading a story? A little bit. Uh, just Google just Google my first and last name IMDb. Oh, give me a second. <laughs> oh, there it is. I can't upload any of the videos I have because technically that's copyright infringement. That is true. That is true. Yes. Oh God! The picture of you, like from the pictures of you from that time period, is just such a very different. Yeah, it's. Oh God! Uh, just the memory of it all. <laughs> I remember that vest. That it was a decent vest. I do remember that vest. I remember you wearing that vest. I know because um, I got in trouble because I was like, I'm just gonna keep this vest, and then I got phone calls from wardrobe like. Hey, you know, you just can't keep the vest, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Uh, all right. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> you've, you've totally, you've totally derailed any thought I had. <laughs> oh, it's so good, though. <laughs> I got the Cryptopedia plugs in there, though. The number, of, like, the stuff that you spend, you spend your money on the strangest things sometimes, Brandon. Oh, yes. Although, I guess this is not the strangest thing. No. Um, I think the Hornswoggle might be one of the strangest ones. Hornswoggle would be str- stranger, yeah. Well, you already did it. Oh, yeah. You already did it. That That's yeah. in the ether. <laughs> that's in the, the totality of existence. Uh-huh. Um, all right, so let's go back to the beginning of the story. Um... London, 1837. Yes. It appears that the first instance of spring Jack occurred in the village of Barnes, September 1837. In the original incarnation, Jack is described as an imp, taking the form of a bull harassing a woman. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, it's like a spectral bull, bull or something. I, listen, this story is weird. I don't honestly under... Okay. So, I looked at the like newspaper articles from the time. Yeah. And... It looks like they were making this association at the time, so that must be why the association's there. But, like, okay. for the life of me, I don't understand why these things are associated. They've just become canonically associated. And, like, this isn't a real newspaper that these associations are made from that yeah. time. Like, it is actually from that time. I looked at the newspaper. 
it looks like trash because newspapers from that time are impossible to are read. Are the worst. They're really bad. Yeah. But it, this is actually like not just some random person making these links later on. This is links that were made at the time. So, in the first few months, Jack is actually more similar to the Monkey Man in New Delhi. Oh, okay. Like very well, again st- in the Monkey Man episode, they compared him to Spring Hill Jack a little bit. Yeah, he's very yeah. stochastic, right? Like, yeah, a lot of loosely connected events, and he would haunt the villages in the southern and western side of like the overall London metropolis, right? Yeah. So like past suburbs at that time to the villages. Okay. So like, like I'd consider Hurley to be a suburb of Kingston. Okay. This is like the Accord. If we're talking like locally, I got you, yeah. Right. So, um, reports range from ghostly apparitions, bulls, demons, baboons, apparently, and more. As Jack apparently visited around a dozen villages in the region, yeah. much like the Monkey Man or Mad Gasser, reports were conflicting at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, in one noteworthy example, Jack was reported as being clad in armor with red shoes. Okay. Yeah, I I don't know. <laughs> That's in this different. encounter, the man was uh, beaten and his clothes shredded by Jack oh. and two other ghostly assailants because apparently yeah. he had more uh, like friends with him. Yeah. Uh, to me, this sounds more like a drunk guy getting beaten up and retelling the story to hide some responsibility in the beating, but that's unsubstantiated. Yeah. Um, for people who are reading the episode notes or the research, I do have a little bit of a clip of uh, the the newspaper itself. Yeah. Um, and I really want to convent, condemn, not condemn, commend Mike Dash mm-hmm. for de- condensing these newspaper reports because it saved me a ton of time. Nice. Because these newspaper reports are nearly impossible to read. There, I see some screenshots. It's pretty brutal. It's brutal. And not only that, that's not even the actual picture because, like, it was, like, six columns... Yeah. Right. And there was no sh- there was no row structure. The titles were not correct. Nothing was good on it. Um, also, when I was looking for the newspaper, I accidentally stumbled upon a uh, newspaper from Georgia, and yeah. it's really disappointing. It's really depressing because at this time, uh, I think slavery was banned in England. Yeah. Not the case in Georgia. Oh. So we'll just okay. move on from there. Um. Really upsetting, actually. Really, really upsetting to read some of the things that were in newspapers at the time. Yeah, uh, I believe it. Humans are terrible. Humans so, are terrible. It's just a fact. So, uh, 1837 sightings of Jack were largely classified into three taxonomic groups. Um, a devil, a bear, or a bull. Those those were legitimately the three most common. Yeah. The, like, ba- the baboon was an outlier. Um, each variant came in corporeal and ghostly forms. And it had variable physical features. Oof. Typically, blue flames, spring heels, and metallic talons were the most popular features, regardless of form. So, there, you'd see blue flames on like the bear yeah. or the the bull or all that stuff, and they'd have like metallic bits and pieces, and they'd just be more imposing. Yeah. Um, the nature of the story varied wildly, ranging from assaults to dancing in the square. I'm assuming it was menacingly, okay. but they didn't say. Uh, like the solid, like the shark. They're snapping at each other, like the sharks. I, I'm assuming. I'm assuming. Yeah. Uh, although that that one seems as though it was like a retelling of an older story, so mm-hmm. it's jazz out there, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's all jazz, man. Yeah. In, in one case, uh, the sighting was even supposedly tracked back to a police officer on a yeah. white horse, and in another. Oh. A heifer. A so, heifer. Wait, so a police people, officer on a heifer? Uh, on a, a white horse, and then another one was a heifer. Oh, just a heifer on her own. Yeah. So okay. it was just like, it, it was wild. Apparently, yeah. everything was spring Jack. Like, <laughs> I, I'm going to assume that the dog, like a dog walking down the street was spring da- Jack at yeah. this point. Because Probably a good assumption. People were losing their shit. Oh, man. And, I mean, he was assaulting people, but, like... Yeah. Like... It, it, it's so bizarre. Mm-hmm. It's so bizarre that, like, they assign everything to this weird supernatural entity that 
from my perspective, doesn't seem to have consistency, but yeah. suddenly everything is him. <laughs> um, yeah. Generally speaking, these stories are unsubstantiated. Mm-hmm. Surprise, surprise. Oh, uh, uh, that's the... Wait, hold up. What? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. How? yeah. You don't I, I, say. It, I know, right? Most of the rumor mill was uh, spread chiefly by servant girls until early 1838 when reporting started happening about the, the cases. Yeah. So, like, most of the most of the articles start really showing up after, like, the December time period. Yeah. So. One of the more interesting contemporary explanations from this time period for the rash of sightings and activity was that Jack was a group of nobles. Uh, okay. Playing a game with the populace. According what? to a group of citizens investigating Jack, he was a group yeah. of rascals connected with high families and that bets amount to to the amount of 5,000 pounds, which nowadays what? is roughly uh, 555,000 pounds. Yeah. Which is a lot. Yeah. It's <laughs> which is like half a million pounds. dollars. Yeah. Uh because pounds and the dollar are pretty close now. I think it's a little bit more than half a million dollars. Yeah. Um, are at stake upon the success or failure of the abominable proceedings, whose object was to destroy the lives of not less than 30 human beings. Viz, eight old bachelors, ten old maids, six and six ladies' maids, and as many servants' girls as they can, depriving them of their reason and otherwise accelerating their deaths. Okay. Basically, what? what they're saying is a bunch of rich kids are yeah. betting on whether or not they can make someone get so scared that they die. Oh, I got you. That's literally what it's saying. Yeah. It's saying that it's a bunch of bets of like people like just screwing with yeah. people. It's basically, um, it's basically scare tactics. Ah, uh, there's a few episodes on Netflix. Not the old one. The new no, one. the new one with uh with uh, Tracy Morgan name? Tracy Morgan yeah um I, I watched one it wasn't as good as the old ones no I agree I, the not, I'm not ones. I'm not knocking Tracy Morgan I'm just saying that I think that the ideas were better back yeah. in the day that's all oh I agree um so the theory was reported in local newspapers at the time however their tone seemed to be incredulous um yeah. that being said from my perspective, that doesn't sound like that unreasonable of a theory. Mm-hmm. Like, it seems totally reasonable that, like, a bunch of noble dudes are just being dicks to some commoners. Yeah. Rich people have a tendency of being assholes. Mm-hmm. There, I said it. <laughs> um, that yeah. being said, at the time, this theory was fairly popular. And it captured the imagination of at least one resident of Peckham as they signed their letter. Uh, who wrote to the then mayor of London. Okay. <clears throat> I can't do an English action, so I'm not going to. Uh, <laughs> Fine. S- some individuals of, as the writer believes, the higher ranks of life, have laid a wager with a mischievous and foolhardy companion, name as yet unknown, that he durst not take upon himself the task of many of the villagers in London of three disguises, a ghost, a bear, and a devil. And moreover, that he will not dare to enter gentlemen's gardens for the purpose of alarming the alarming the inmates of the house. I guess inmates in regards to people who live there. So yeah. the, the idea is this, this thing has not been attacking the, the upper classes. Mm-hmm. So it makes more sense that it might be someone from there. Uh, okay. The wager was, however, been expect, accepted... And the unmanly villain has succeeded in depriving seven ladies of their senses. At one house, he rung the bell, and on the servant coming to open the door, the worse, this worse-than-brute stood in a no less dreadful figure than a specter clad most perfectly. I literally don't know what that sentence means, other than I think he was just, like, like dashing or something. Yeah. I, I don't know. Uh, the consequence was that this poor girl immediately swooned and has never from that moment been in her senses, but on oh. seeing any man screams out most li- violently, take him away. Oh, there God. Are, yeah, so this is kind of like 
tying yeah. into the whole hysteria thing that was yeah. popular in that area, which is kind of gross in its own right. Mm-hmm. But that's there's an episode of Sawbones about that, which, as I told you, apparently on Podcast Addict, we're similar to. Oh yes, apparently. Apparently, um, so take that as you may. There are two ladies, which your lordship will regret to hear, who have husbands and children who are not expected to recover, but likely to become a burden on their families. Um. So yeah, it's a little bit of like, it's it's kind of weird the the whole setup for this because it's like very um. What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, yeah, it, it's pretty misogynistic. Yeah. <laughs> that's, oh, yeah. That's the word I was looking for. Um, this led, like, this led Mayor Sir John Cohen to reveal during a public session, um, although much like the mo- local medias, he seemed to be less than convinced. I don't know what that sentence I actually wrote there was. Mm-hmm. Maybe I've been reading too much, uh, too much 1800s speak. Oh, probably. I think so. Probably because <laughs> that that that's that reads like eighteen hundred speak. I I, yeah. I I tried to uh, catch it in flight, but man, mm-hmm. yeah, no, you've been reading too much. I've been reading too much. Uh, additionally, uh, as the incidents had been occurring in the surrounding villages, he had an extremely low in- impetus to con- address the concerns directly. Because quite frankly, he really only cares about the main city of London. Yeah. Um, but plus, if you layer on top of the fact that it's unlikely that this is really a conspiracy of nobles, because mm. at the end of the day, it is really kind of unlikely. It's more likely that people are attributing unrelated events yeah, and like stuff like that to it. Because 1800s, from my, from my true crime experience, it was just fucking lawless everywhere. Yeah. Um, so... I like this though. You've got a uh, who is that? Sexy Batman. Yeah, it's it's like is he sexy Batman? Um, yeah. So let's go back to Old Ford, which is where yes. the uh, the legend happened. Uh, the legend itself does have a record of happening, mm-hmm. um, which is fairly uncommon for these types of stories. I'd say. Yeah. Um. But. Old Ford, February 19th, 1838. Um, this is where spring Jack attacked the uh, uh, the Alsop family, Jane Alsop okay. in particular. Um, it really marks a turning point for Jack because from this point forward, he's less of a shapeshifter and more of a single demonic entity. It should okay. be noted that the above legend, while flowery, flower, flowery, flowery, is pretty close to the actual details that were recorded in the newspapers at the time. Okay. Um, around 9 o'clock, 18-year-old Jane Alsop answers her door in response to a supposed police officer claiming to have found spring Jack. The officer, requesting a candle, and a- appeared to be wearing an officer's cloak. Right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so these are all things that actually, <clears throat> according to them, happened. Um, since people in the past have had poor stranger danger as a rule... Mm-hmm. Um, what am I? I was really out of my mind when I wrote this. <laughs> uh, Jane opens the door, and it's Jack himself, right? Mm-hmm. Um, the I think literally the only reason there's less serial killers now is because Stranger Danger's a thing. Yeah, like I legitimately think because like mm-hmm. whatever. Uh, Jane described him as wearing a large helmet and an outfit which appeared to fit okay. him very tight. So oh, okay. I'm imagining like a, uh, like like a David Bowie situation. Okay. A little bit personally, I know it's not, but I like the idea. Not like a Zentai suit with a helmet. That's what I'm imagining. Okay. I mean, I don't think that's what it is, but I think that that would be very, very, very funny. It would be um, very funny. Additionally, the monster, and I I put question marks because like I don't know. Uh, yeah. Had claws coated in metallic substance, which he used to attack Jane and tear her down. The altercation was violent, with Jane having hair pulled out, and she was only saved due to the intervention of her older sister. Which, that's a really non-flowery way of telling that legend. Um, Oh, yes. 
it's that's way more utilitarian. Mm-hmm. Uh, basically, opens the door, gets attacked by someone who has like claws and like a tight fitting outfit. That's it. Claims to be Spring Heel Jack. So, Jane's account was vouched for by her sisters, although her father did add an interesting point. Um, it was perfectly clear that there was more than one ruffian connected to the outrage, as the fellow who committed the violence did not return for his cloak, but scampered across the fields. So, there must have been some person with him to pick it up. Um, I actually kind of thought that that was actually kind of a logical jump, right? Yeah. Um, that being said, well, but let me, let me, let me read what I wrote. Uh, clearly, Jane's father was in the multiple nobleman camp as the cause of the flap of Jack sightings, which I want to point out in the original like mystery of Spring Hill Jack, they yeah. do they do use the term flap because mm-hmm. it's literally supposed to be them talking about aliens. Oh, so okay. this is this is probably the first time I've ever seen in the stuff that I've been reading for this podcast someone use the term yeah. flap. Okay, yeah, but that's because Spring Hill Jack didn't originate as a cryptozoological endeavor. It didn't originate as a folklore endeavor. It originated as an alien endeavor. Ah, uh, okay. Which is important in a fact that I don't think many people know, because yeah. I sure as hell didn't know it until I started doing research for these this series of yeah. episodes. Um, It's kind of bizarre when you think about it. Mm-hmm. This, however, differed from the official refining, the official findings by the officer who inf- inspected the c- case. Mm-hmm. I I think my I think I'm starting to get hungry, hangry. Yeah. Did you see that there's a new Pokemon that has a hangry form? No. It's a that's hamster. Fantastic. That's fantastic. It's a hamster that gets hangry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so happy to live in this world. Um <laughs> So the 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 officer in question was a officer James Lee, who believed yeah. that the culprit had been an individual who had been in the area for some time, terrorizing the citizenry. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, like there was actually someone walking around just being a jerk, wearing yeah. uh, a large Spanish cloak, mm-hmm. which I guess is just the type of cloak. Um, in fact, like that person was even seen leaving the the direction of the scene of the crime. Mm-hmm. So like they the people who were running to the people who were calling for the cops, they saw yeah. a dude in a cloak just like, you know, running. Running yeah. away. Which why they didn't stop him, I, I don't know. But I couldn't tell you. I mean it's the eighteen hundreds. I'm not gonna just stop a random person. Who knows? Yeah. They might have a musket that will take them five minutes to reload. Oh yeah, then what's gonna happen? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Nobody Although, knows. Like, I think I think the repeating revolver was around at this point, but that's a whole other thing. Yeah. Um the resulting conclusion, as such, was that the incident was a case of mis- mistaken identification, coupled with a known belligerent indivi- individual, resulting in the birth of a legend. Man, I cannot read today. Uh, in fact, Mike Dash found some sources that even in- that even seemed to indicate that the individual might have been known by name. Oh, okay. As <laughs> as he had been walk- wandering the streets, asking paper- passerby's. What have you to say to Spring Jack? <laughs> okay. So, um, when I was reading this, I'm like, oh, this is just a drunk dude. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A very drunk so, dude. I think it was less, ha and more, hey, hey, I'm Spring Heel Jack. Yeah. Arrgh. Um, This is only further emphasized by a sighting five days later. Where yeah. Jack once again struck, knocking on the door to a house, and when answered by a servant boy, dropped his cloak and presented a most hideous appearance. Oh, I know what that means. So given this is the Victorian I know what era, that means. I can yeah. only assume this is a polite phrasing for a flashing. <laughs> that was a straight up flash. That so, was a flash. You can't even. Oh, man. That's Victorian for a flash. Yeah, yeah you are that's, correct. That's definitely Victorian for a flash. So, like... This is a drunk dude. Yes. This is a drunk dude going around being like, Ugh. and his his preternatural speed is just probably the fact that drunk people tend to be a little bit slick, slippery. Yeah. 
I'm just too wiggly assume. to catch. He's too wiggly to catch, and people are too, like, ashamed that they can't catch him. Yeah. So, there's one more incident uh, in the, the, the initial flap of Spring Hill Jack sightings. Yeah. And this occurred in Limehouse on February 28th, 1838. Um, and I got, like, a little picture. I don't know yeah. if this is from the, the incident, but you can actually see they got, like, really, really terrible little spring heels on his on his uh, boots. Oh, yeah. You yeah. Lean close, but yeah. They kind of look like uh, they kind of look like Sonic the Hedgehog springs. Yeah. Um, so I can only assume that means he could jump real good because of them. Or not, because that's not how anything works. But whatever. I mean, moon shoes don't really make you jump that high. No. It's a, it's a shame, but... You know, I don't, you know, I always wanted to try moon shoes. Me too. Our feet are too big for them now. Uh, if though. Oh, are they? Yeah. Yeah. They're for like children. They don't make like adult moon shoes. I don't think. Except like the circus ones where there's like a big, like a leaf spring that goes, but that seems. Well, a that's not intense. a moon shoe. That's different. Yeah. That's like uh, adult moon shoes. Oh, oh, I found one. Oh, this is okay. interesting. Um, so it's called the KJ XR3 Special Edition in black slash pink. They have okay. it in black yellow as well. If you if that if that's something interesting to you, gotcha. um, it looks like it's a leaf spring. Okay. With uh, it's a leaf spring that has rubber tread on the bottom, so you don't like yeah. eat shit. Okay. Uh, let me send you it. There we go. They're actually pretty cool. Um, right. I die. Ship it. I die if I use them, so I'm not going to use them. But I, I know for a fact I would be just dead. Okay, they're kind of cool. They are pricey for what they are. Yeah, they are because it's literally just a uh, rollerblade shoes on t- strapped to a leaf spring. Yes, that's all it is. I'd rather that's pay weird. for the I'd rather pay for the ones that have like the blades because those seem like. Yeah. Like they can do better. These, these look like they're made out of plastic. Cause they are. Yeah. Um. I had a feeling that that plastic is gonna get brittle pretty quick. Pretty quick. But regardless, back to Springheel Jack. Um. <laughs> around the same time as the Alsop incident, uh, eight thirty p.m. This time, Jack struck one final time in eighteen thirty-eight. This time, it was in Limehouse, and the 18-year-old Lucy Scales, so once again, another 18-year-old, um, yeah. and her sister, who's unnamed, strangely. I, I have no idea why she's unnamed. Um, but regardless, uh, were the targets, because she was also assaulted. It's weird. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the pair had been walking home after seeing their butcher brother, who had been living in Limestone at the time, which, by all accounts, was a respectable part of town. Um, the pair... As the pair was walking down Green Dragon Alley, which I want to take a moment and admire the name. That's a good name. It's a very good name. I wish we had I wish we had name street names like Green Dragon. Uh and like oh, that would be so cool. Like Tr- Tarask yeah. Lane. Tarask? You want a Tarask, okay. I want Tarask Lane. I want to live on Tarask Lane. I don't want mm-hmm. to spell Tarask Lane though. Yeah, that's true. Because uh, it's it is French, so Yeah. Um, Lucy was accosted by a person standing on the road wearing a large cloak. The individual had opened the cloak and a gout of blue flame erupted in Lucy's face, oh, which, I, which okay. also, which also could probably be a euphemism for something else, yeah. but I don't think, I don't think yeah. it is, but it could be. It could be though. Uh, it did blind her though, temporarily and triggered violent fits, which lasted for several hours. The attack was supposedly heard by the brother who rushed out to help his sister. The individual's description was largely the same, a gentlemanly man in a large cloak, who this time was carrying a bullseye lantern. Mm-hmm. Um, which is, a, I guess it was like similar to the type that the police used at the time. Yeah. Little else happened in this case. There wasn't really a huge investigation. Although, a number of pranksters and criminals did try to invoke the enigma of... The, the name of the Enigma immediately afterwards. So they were like, oh, I'm spring Heel Jack. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, like one dude like tried to bludgeon a woman to death after saying Jeez. he was he was spring Heel Jack. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty fucked up. 
Um, my favorite, though, was the first cosplayer, Daniel Granville, who wore a mask with blue glazed paper to on the mouth to simulate Jack's breath. So okay. there's just a dude walking around with, like, basically construction paper, like, yeah. like, like, it's like the first Comic-Con. Yeah. Um, and less fun, as I said, are the cases of assault where the assailant attacked their victims while claiming to be the creature. Um, I don't want to go into detail on them because they're, they're, they're mostly the same and they're all pretty dark. Um, yeah. There is more detail in the Mike Dash article, which is included mm-hmm. in the show notes. Okay. So. I'm going to stop this here um, okay. because Jack goes dormant for a couple decades and its history gets a little bit muddled, right? Mm-hmm. And right here is the perfect point to stop. Absolutely oh, okay. perfect because the stories start to change after this point mm-hmm. um, and some of the tone starts to change. Like s- the nature of spring Jack starts to mutate. Right, um, because because he is this enigma like creature. Yeah. Right. Um, I I should note though, I couldn't actually find where the first utterance of Springheel Jack was. I'm okay. sure Mike Dash has found that, but I couldn't find yeah. it for the life of me. Um, okay. I don't know where Springheel Jack like coalesced. Mm-hmm. All I know is by the time that the newspaper started reporting on him, it was like one of those things that had already started, like yeah, being a thing. So. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's what I got for this week. Next okay. week, we're gonna go a little bit farther into Jack's history, and we're yeah. gonna start talking about uh, how he was rediscovered and some of the implications around that. Oh, okay. I want to point out. I w- I do want to like couch that though. Jack was actually something that happened. Like the, yeah. the phenomena of Jack was something that happened. Yeah. So Shoot. there are there is newspaper from the time period that does say that it actually happened. But some of the things that people claim about him, oh, I not got so you. much. Yeah. And we'll get into that. Okay. Uh, but that's, I think, all I got for this episode. Mm-hmm. Um, I really like the legend. It's a fun legend. <laughs> it was a good one. I liked that. I was excited. <clears throat> all I could think about... I think about spring Jack, yeah? All I could think about spring Jack, like I said at the top of the episode, was the... Um, the Jackie Chan version of him. Yeah. Have you ever seen that one? It's it's kind of... It was in season one, apparently. Uh, he was also very short, which is not really in the in line with what they describe uh, spring Hill Jack as. He was turned into stone. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, because no, he, he made contact with, with salt. Mm-hmm. Oh, he appeared in season two, The Return of the Pussycat. What? Yeah. That was a weird show. It was good. His martial arts are parkour-based combat. <laughs> it makes sense. And his race was troll, so I guess they were up on the troll game early on. Yeah. Um. But anywho, as always... I'm going to do the plugs, I think. As always, okay. our uh, our website is CryptopediaCast.com. Instagram is at CryptopediaCast, and Twitter is at CryptopediaCast. If you want to email us, CryptopediaCast at gmail.com or us at CryptopediaCast.com. We do have a Patreon. Uh, I think we thanked them last week. Brandon, do you want to do a thanking so they get it in your voice, yeah. too? Yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah. Well, then I'd like to thank Clay Sinclair, as well as Marty Von Party. For patronizing us in that way. Yeah, in the good way, not the yeah. not the shitty way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we also have a Facebook group. I don't really post anything in there anymore. And I, I don't know. I, I prefer using Twitter to communicate with people now. Okay. Um, generally speaking, if people want to post stuff in that group, by all means, we'll generally approve people like when they, they apply and all that stuff. And, you know, just don't be a jerk. Mm-hmm. That's all I have to say. Um, if you enjoyed the podcast, be sure to rate, review, subscribe. We're coming up on our 52nd episode soon. Oh, yes. Which is our, our year-long celebration of weird. 
um, which we're going to have an announcement that episode and we're going to talk about some programming stuff and then yeah. so be sure to listen to that episode because it's going to be important. I have to work on episode 49 first. Yeah, I got to work on episode... Uh, well, I, I've started work on episode 50 because... Brag about it. Yeah. Well, I, this, this episode lent itself to the second episode. Yeah, I actually true. have another episode 50 because I didn't think that this was going to be a two-parter. Oh, okay. That's a good spot to be in. Yeah. So that episode's going to come... <laughs> But I think it's yeah. going to be pushed back past episode 52 because um, mm-hmm. we've already got a plan for episode 52. Yeah. Uh, so if you have any monster requests or stories, be sure to send those in. And uh, if you've got sources, send those in too. I love sources. Sources are good. Yes. Yeah. If you'd like, you could find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com. And my Twitter is at cryptobrandon. If you want to get in contact with me on Instagram, I'm at mu2057. My Twitter is at jfdunham. My website, johndunhamgames.com. And if you want to email me, john at cryptopediacast.com. Our art was done by Tom Hill. You could find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com and his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. As always, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And things are going to get weird. Hey, I did it. (laughs) 